Good afternoon and welcome to this press conference from the 48th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum here in snowy Davos. Thank you for joining us in the room. Thank you for joining us on the live stream. Whether you're watching on Periscope or Facebook, you're equally welcome. We um, quite untypically for the forum gave this press conference a humble title. We called it uh, an, a press conference, an update for the fourth industrial revolution. We actually have some quite exciting announcements to make here today. Um, to which we'll come in a second, but first uh, let me introduce the wonderful panel we have to talk uh, about the Fourth Industrial Revolution um, first. Um, to my immediate left, uh, we're joined uh, by Murat Sönmez, who's the head of the Center for the Fourth Industrial Re Revolution in San Francisco and also a member of the managing board of the World Economic Forum. To his left, uh, we're joined by Yuichi Funabashi, uh, funabashi san is the head of the Asia Pacific Initiative. Welcome and thank you for being here. Right at the heart and center of our panel here today, we are joined by Jean de Dieu Urangirigua, the ministry uh, from the Ministry of Information, Communication and Technology of Rwanda. Thank you for being here, Minister. Further down the line, we are joined by Nancy Brown, the CEO of the American Heart Association, and last but not least, uh, a a fellow friend from Geneva, we are joined um, by Seth Berkeley, the CEO of Gavi, the Vaccine uh, Alliance. Thank you all for being here uh, and um, thank you for watching. Murad, without further ado, what is the update on the Fourth Industrial Revolution that we would like to share with our audience here today? Yeah, thank you, Georg. Since we launched the center in San Francisco in March 2016, we have uh, assembled a dream team on all uh, nine, eight projects that we're running. In addition, we have 37 business partners, 10 governments who are co-locating with us. Today, we have announced uh, the expansion of this concept to the global locations by announcing sister centers in Japan uh, with Funabashi-san um, and Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, in India, as well as the United Arab Emirates. These jurisdictions are very eager to accelerate the positive impact to, of the fourth industrial revolution in their own uh, countries, but by being a global uh, member of a global network, they want to also contribute to the global uh, design of these protocols. So the expansion of the network of centers is one of the major uh, announcements from today. We're also announcing the formation of global councils on artificial intelligence, blockchain, internet of things, precision medicine, autonomous vehicles, and drones. These will be global governing bodies for each of these six projects. Uh, consisting of governments, civil society, business, academia, as well as uh, technology entrepreneurs. And finally, we're announcing the formation of uh, Fourth Industrial Revolution Center Academic Fellows, which allows postdoctoral students from universities who are engaged in research in these uh, eight or nine areas that we're working on, giving them the ability to be part of this global ecosystem, contributing to the creation of these protocols and also for us tapping into the leading research. We will have uh, five already uh, in place soon and they'll go back to their campuses for, an ex uh, for the second year. So each year we expect to have initially five uh, already announced by Andrew Hoffman and we expect to have many more. Thank you, uh, Murat. Funabashi san, you represent the Asia Pacific Initiative, which is one of the founding supporters of the center in Japan. Why did you throw your weight behind this? Why do you think this is an important development? Well, first of all, uh, thank you uh, very much for having me here. Uh, I'm uh, very much delighted to uh, announce the launch of uh, Tokyo Center, Japan Center, I should say, uh, today. And uh, this is uh, uh, made up of uh, three uh, founding partners, uh, the World Economic Forum, the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, and Asia Pacific uh, Initiative, our think tank, a Tokyo-based independent think tank. Um, first, I uh, really uh, should emphasize that how important, how crucial uh, to uh, set up the uh, sister uh, centers, and I like to uh, uh, applaud the World Economic Forum particularly uh, Professor Klaus Schwab, uh, to create this uh, center. Uh, the uh, technology transcends the national border. 
The regulation, however, are local. So that uh, what the world need is uh, to uh, uh, find that uh, good ways uh, to uh, harness the uh, te technological prowess at the same time uh, being focused on that uh, social stability and uh, a value system. So um, I think that uh, the, uh, uh, the we really need collaborate globally uh, how to uh, harness those uh, things. So uh, I, I think that uh, sister uh, organizations and centers uh, it will be very much conducive uh, to promote that cooperation. Second, uh, I would also like to emphasize that uh, a critical uh, aspect of uh, collaborating that uh, private-public partnership uh, that uh, actually that government just cannot keep up with the uh, dramatic speed of the uh, technological innovation. Uh, but at the same time, uh, that uh, te radical technology, technological innovation has, cannot be deployed at the scale uh, without uh, public trust and uh, due process. So what the world need is to uh, uh, find a new way of, uh, for the government to uh, work with the private sector. Uh, you know, well, in a way, uh, it's, it, it is a new uh, uh, model of private uh, public partnership. And uh, uh, I think that uh, to uh, uh, find that best uh, formula of uh, uh, that uh, the technological deployment in societies and uh, harmonizing governance. So um, uh, we are very much uh, uh, proud to be a part of this adventure. And I think Japan has much to contribute in the field uh, such as uh, uh, mobility, including the uh, driverless vehicle, and the healthcare, uh, blockchain, and drones, uh, and uh, uh, others, so robotics. Um, so I am very much excited that to be a, a part of this uh, venture. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much. Minister, uh, Murad mentioned the Dream Team, and, uh, and you and, and Rwanda have been early, very early members of the Dream Team. Uh, Rwanda has been very engaged in the San Francisco Center, particularly on the area of drones. Please share with us uh, your perspective on why do you think this is important. Yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, we thank the World Economic Forum, uh, Professor Schwab, and uh, the Center for Fourth Industrial Revolution. We are already uh, benefiting for the, from the work of, of, the, of the center. Uh, in 2016, uh, we got an invitation to uh, partner with the center in uh, enhancing and uh, upgrading our drone regulation. Uh, I would like to say today, and I'm happy to say that uh, the, the regulation now have passed in cabinet uh, last week. Now we have a regulation that really can uh, uh, support our uh, drone uh, uh, rollout. We already have uh, a, a use case or a base case or with uh, a zip line where uh, we deployed drones in the delivery of uh, blood to remote hospitals. We are witnessing now the impact uh, the initiative is uh, having on our citizen lives. We are seeing now 
uh, mothers uh, being saved. We are seeing now the reduction in, in what is time required uh, to deliver blood to, to remote hospitals. We are having now new applications and new entrants to, to our market interested in exploring how the drone drone can really be used to, to, to in, in various sectors, including uh, agriculture, uh, collection of various data, and the regulation is something that we really needed now to, to promote that. Uh, that's uh, an incentive, that's uh, a guideline that we wanted even to monitor and to secure uh, the use of drone and uh, to promote uh, the interest we are seeing in, 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 in drone application in various sectors. Uh, I think uh, we are seeing um, a multiplier effect uh, from the young people in various innovation labs and, and centers trying now to, to dig deep into, into drone. And we are seeing that this regulation as something that will really help us uh, manage uh, risks, uh, uh, providing uh, a platform where people can uh, create new uh, opportunity, new pro concept proven, uh, uh, and testing the ideas. And uh, we really thank the center for uh, the tremendous effort and, uh, and, and work, and uh, uh, we are happy. Uh, and uh, soon we'll be sharing actually how now uh, we are going to, 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 to manage uh, uh, those opportunities on our table. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister, and we, of course, appreciate your partnership. Um, Nancy, you represent the American Heart Association. That's not necessarily the organization one would first and foremost associate with the Fourth Industrial Re Revolution, and yet you've decided to partner uh, with the San Francisco Center. Tell us why. Yes. Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity, and it's really the uh, honor of the American Heart Association to have the opportunity to be a partner of the Fourth Industrial Revolution Center and one of the founding partners, I might add. Um, what you should know is, as perhaps context, is cardiovascular diseases that include heart disease and stroke are the number one killer of people throughout the world. Seventeen and a half million people a year lose their life to cardiovascular diseases, and we've been focused for almost a hundred years on finding new solutions scientifically to change that trajectory for people in addition to all of the uh, great work we do in changing environments and changing policies and inspiring people to live a more healthful life. And at the foundation of our work in science as a scientific organization, uh, we have, um, in addition to funding science and research, we have our own institute for precision cardiovascular medicine where we are working to help deliver the right treatments to the right patients at the right time. And clearly at the center of that value proposition is data and technology. Um, we recognize the critical role that the center will play in helping to make sure that there are global standards for data sharing and data regulation, that this intersection of scientific data and data collected by individuals is used um, to further and enhance scientific study, but also in a way that protects and promotes um, what individuals and patients want and desire to have happen with their personalized health data. And we think that the center will play a critically important role in helping to understand how many of these new technologies that are being created can contribute data for precision medicine um, from wearable devices and other sorts of, of technologies that can give real-time information uh, to further and rapidly advance precision medicine. Uh, the final thing I might um, mention is is that in addition to data being such an important currency in science and technology, this idea of redesigning clinical trials, which is how drugs and devices get to market, um, will have real promise once we can have a universal agreement on how this data can be and should be governed for scientific use. And so those are a few of the many reasons uh, that we are so excited to partner with the Center. Thank you, Nancy. Seth, um, the minister mentioned Sipline, and Sipline is not just a, uh, a social enterprise of the Schwab Foundation, it's also an organization that had tremendous help from, from Gavi to, to, to go where it is now. Um, this could be one example, but, but tell us, why is Gavi part of this, uh, uh, of this, of this work? 
So thank you so much. And first of all, to say Gavi is a child of the World Economic Forum, born here 18 years ago, one of the most successful public-private partnerships. We've immunized more than 650 million additional children, prevented more than 9 million deaths, and provide vaccines to about 60 percent of the world's population in the 73 poorest countries, plus deal with epidemic diseases. Now, you might say, well, what's the connection there? The challenge is we want to get these vaccines to every single person. And that means we need to use technology to leapfrog, to get to that last mile. Today, often it's in urban slums, sometimes it's in hinterlands, and we were really pleased to work with Rwanda to um, help bring this technology of drones to be delivering blood. Um, we originally looked at it for rabies vaccines. It turns out Rwanda's in pretty good shape with rabies, but um, other technologies like snake venom, these are time-sensitive things. Now, what's important about this is not every country is Rwanda. So now that we have success in Rwanda and it's being extended to the whole country, we want to take this forward in Tanzania, which will be a different challenge. And we're lucky to have Rwandese scientists who will come and help uh, do this. But when they do that, as we begin to move country to country, how do we deal with the regulation, the governance? How do we deal with the sharing of technology, the data? These are the problems we have. And we're talking about drones, but we have similar issues in terms of new ways with digital technology. We're looking, the, 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 the child health card is the most common uh, piece of vital registration, more than birth certificate, death certificates, marriage certificates. How do we turn that into digital identity? How does it work with blockchain? How do we think about using that as a way to improve supply chains, which will make a difference across countries? So there are many ways we can, we see in, in working with this exciting new uh, forum center that can really make a difference bringing technology to the world's poor to help solve their problems. Thank you, uh, Seth. Um, and I'm sure a lot of journalists in the room want to ask what will the fourth industrial revolution do with the media industry, but you're shy to ask. Anyway, let's, uh, let's open the floor for, for question and answers. We have microphones in the room. If I can have a show of hands, um, don't be shy. You shouldn't have uh, chosen the profession of journalism uh, if you're shy. I see there is a question, yeah, very good, the lady in the middle. If you could state your name and organization for the sake of our live stream audience as well, please. Yeah, my name is Kate Nudy from France 24 in Paris. Um, under Emmanuel Macron's administration, Paris has really been pushing itself as a new tech hub for Europe. I'm wondering if there's been any thought among any of you, for, for any of you, to expand your presence in France? Is that something that's, is it a message that's being heard in your industry? What's the reaction to these efforts that the, uh, that the Macron administration has really been trying to get out there to make France an attractive place, not just to do business, but to do in to particularly develop new kinds of technology? Thank you very much. Um, Mora, do you want to uh, sure, try and answer with that? With pleasure. We're um, following the developments, uh, not just uh, from the news, but we're actively engaged with the Macron government who will be here uh, later this week. Uh, in our engagement model in San Francisco is to invite select governments, representative governments from around the world, to collaborate with us, like we have done with uh, Rwanda. In fact, Rwanda moved so fast that uh, Eileen, uh, who's their fellow, showed up before we opened the center. Um, and we now have 10 governments uh, engaged with us. Japan followed them with METI. And we said, just be patient, we'll be there. And then uh, we launched the center. So uh, we have invited a number of governments uh, to collaborate with us. Today, we have Japan, Rwanda, Bahrain, and uh, Inter-American Development Bank to expand into Latin America, much like uh, with Gavi into emerging countries. Uh, before I came here, we signed the Memorandum of, of Understanding with the government of United Arab Emirates to open a center in uh, the Emirates. and put a fellow into the San Francisco, or work with the San Francisco Center on data policy. So we will make more announcements as we have more governments, and we would welcome definitely uh, France's involvement with us. And uh, we'll make those announcements as we move forward. And and I can't emphasize enough the importance of having governments focus on this technology. So for us in many Francophone countries, having the Macron government talk about the importance of technology engagement, we hope to have some announcements later this week in working with some of those Francophone companies that can make a real difference in the countries that we work in. So that enabling environment is really very important. 
I might also add um, <coughs> that through our work in precision medicine at the American Heart Association, we have a very valued relationship with the European Society of Cardiology, which is based in France. Um, and we will be, in the coming months, uh, announcing some joint projects around precision medicine that will have data and technology at the center of them. Thank you very much. So in short, I think Emmanuel Macron qualifies uh, for the dream team. Um, do we have any other questions uh, in the room? He's a young global leader. Yeah, he is a young global leader. That is, that is correct. Yes, there is a lady uh, on the left side. Please. Um, Claudia Knames, with Press Agency. Who's actually uh, financing these fourth uh, industrial revolution centers? Um, how much is the uh, WEF uh, part of it? Murad, I think that's a question for you. Yeah, so we invested um, about $15 million for the opening of the San Francisco Center, and that's an annual commitment. And in line with the forum's engagement with the global community, we have, we're have we following the same model of inviting businesses to uh, become members on an annual basis. So as we expand into these different centers, we have the business community, or in the case of uh, UAE, the government providing the initial funding to launch these centers. Uh, the continuous engagement of the business community is essential because that's, the, that, that's where the doing uh, comes into the picture. And so far in San Francisco, we have 37 companies. It's all publicly listed. And um, we're expanding uh, those partnerships. And earlier today, when we announced the Japan Center, funabashi san I think we had seven or eight Japanese CEOs on the panel who will be part of the uh, Japan Center. So the initial funding is uh, coming from the business community. Uh, we have secured that for the three jurisdictions I mentioned, India, Japan, and United Arab Emirates. But uh, that's not going to cover all the costs, but it gives us the engagement, more than the financials, the engagement and commitment of the business community to uh, make these investments. And we'll invite more and more businesses to engage with us over time. Thank you very much. And I should also mention that we invested in, in great colleagues as well at the center. Here in the room also are, are Suika, Timothy, and Anne and Amanda, who are also all working in, in, at the San Francisco Center, and uh, are happy to answer questions afterwards for, for you as well. Happy to put you on the spot, uh, dear colleagues. Um, are there any other questions? We have probably time for one more question. Uh, could you wait for the microphone, please? Sorry. Mr. Berkeley, could you expand on your comments about the child health card, card cards and how technology will improve? Thank you. Yeah, one of the <clears throat> problems in the world, in my world, is the fact that a third of children are not registered. And that is a problem for me to be able to track you know, where we're missing children. But it also becomes a problem as they get older. For example, we know what girls are in school. We don't know what girls are out of school. And later on in life for taxation or for voting registries, et cetera. What you'd love to have is universal registration, which is something we, we see in the West. Um, what's interesting is that since every family virtually gets a child health card when they have an immunization, if you could link that to a vital registration, you would have that introduction. It would be non-controversial. It wouldn't be associated with voting or other aspects. So the question is how to do it. And what we want to do is link that with the work that's going on on digital identity and also on just being able to use digital technology to track births. And in fact, here at this WEF, we'll announce as part of our Infuse Innovation for Upscale um, uh, and Equity, um, uh, we will announce that this year's challenge will be in this area. And so this is an example of where the, the, the forum brings together lots of entrepreneurial expertise in this, and the center does, and so there's an opportunity for us to work together to try to drive this forward. Thank you very much. If uh, there are no further questions. Let's be very Swiss and uh, end this press conference on time. Thank you very much to all our panelists today here. Thank you very much uh, for the audience. Thank you for watching.